Hello, good morning. Uh, last time we talk about the all about Bajirigars. Now uh, we will discuss the common illness of the Bajirigars, how to avoid avoid them, and how to some how to treat them. Thank you. So hello my friends, hello my fellow bird breeders and for those who are also aspiring to, uh, planning to have birds like this. Uh, prior to this discussion, uh, my, pre my previous blog is all, uh, about Bajirigars, all about Bajirigars. Uh, their mutations, their plumage, their colors, so they are beautiful and fluffy. But not all the time, they are, they, I, uh, they look like that because there are some common illness that uh, making your bajirigar looks like a zombie or uh, looks like a killer in a movie. So here are some common illness for bajirigars. So first, number one is uh, Nemocodoptis mites. Nemocodoptis mites are borrowing mites of avian species. Nemocodoptis mites, there are different types of mites. For chicken, there are different types. For birds, there are different types. Uh, the, the, uh, the mites for chicken is not the same mites for the birds. They are different. So this will become the result of the face of your bird. Uh, mostly, it will affect the unfeathered areas of your bird. The face, the beak part, the sear part, and the uh, feet. So this will be the, the result, the, what your bird look like if it's infected with this kind of mite. See? This is common in Bajirigars. Look at the sear and look at the beak. It already damaged this one. Look at the head. Before, uh, I this this can be removed, but uh, I I will discuss this later to the treatment for this one. And it also affect the feet of your bird. That one, see. It have the tendency that your bird, uh, your bird feet will get uh, get together. So this is the culprit. This is the one responsible. This is the face of the Nemocodoptes mite. This is the face. Uh, this is the culprit of that suffering of your bird. So look, he is very not so beautiful. <laughs> See that? He is a little bit ugly. See? So that is the tail of the mite. They are bar the head already bar borrowing borrowed inside the the scale of your of your bird. Of your budgie. So it's look like a little bit ewe. See? E. That is the oh, see see how many of them. So how to avoid that one? So first, in order to avoid that one, maintain the cleanliness of your facility. Uh, clean your clean your cage, clean your nest box regular uh, regular on a regular basis. To avoid that one. Next, change the bath of water daily. For those who did not know, uh, budgetigars are uh, uh, lovebirds or lovebirds or parrots are fond of me taking a bath. So, if you put a dish in their cages, 
and you put some some grass, you put water, they always always go there and take a bath. That's why we need to clean it every day. Every day we change the water of that uh, bath dish. See? And I have some advice. When you, you already have birds, uh, for example, a colony of bajirigars and you buy a new one, you buy a new color, do not integrate them immediately to the cage. Do not introduce them. Try to quarantine them first for seven days and try to wash them, try to disinfect them before you integrate them to, new, to your colony to avoid this uh, mite infestation. So how to treat the mites? First, uh, to treat the mites, after you have identified the bird has mites, you will be, you, of course, you can, uh, you can immediately uh, identify that your bird has problem because of that face. If you see that that face of your bird is very ugly, it's have uh, already, already problem with mites. So as they said here, they, we need to both clean, treat the bird and the environment. Wash the cage with a soap. A soap dish is fine. Dry the cage and spray it with perithene product such as ultra, ultra care mite and lice spray. I, will ha I, ha I have some samples here for pictures. So it's from Johnson & Johnson. It's insect powders, anti-mite. This is a powder and they also have a spray version of this one. So spray. This one is my treatment. This one is also uh, uh, invermectin. Invermectin. This one is uh, soluble. This one you can you can directly put this one into the infected part, or you can put this one on the water of the birds, the uh, the watering dish, the bath dish. And See, different mites need different treatments. So, uh, you go to your local avian and ask them what is the necessary, the necessary uh, mite treatment for, for your bird. But we in the Philippines, I will show you what is our treatment for this issue. We treat them this one. Wash out intense. This wash out, this is because in the Philippines, my friends, in our country, the what is cock fighting is very popular. It's very rampant in the in our places. That's why products related to cock fighting is very also available. So we use this one, the wash intense on removing the 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 mites of the of our birds. So we can also use this one before before we introduce our newly newly bought bird to our colony. You try to disinfect him first using this one. This one is a very cheap in the Philippines, maybe around less than thirty pesos. I don't know right now. Maybe before, before it's twenty. I I, I bought this in twenty pesos. So let's proceed. So once again, uh, we, we, we use this one for, for removing the mites, removing the lice of, the, of our birds. So next is Cetacin Beak and Feather Disease. The causes of poor formation of flight and tail feathers, often a combination of polyoma, affected birds, Often referred to as creepers because they have no flight feathers and cannot fly. So imagine a bird that cannot fly. It will look like look like a mouse or something like that. So it's not normal. It's not normal, of course, for your bird not to fly. How come? Oh. So this is the pictures that I have. It's overgrowing of overgrowing of the beak and and have some this bird have a uh, citizen beak and also have some mites. I think the cage of this one is very poor and uh, very 
poor in hygiene. See? This one, my practice before, simply cut the, cut the, trim the beak. But do not, uh, do not attempt to trim the beak when it's already very long because it can, it can, it will hurt your bird. So you keep monitoring your, uh, of course, we are breeding birds. For us, that is our, what's this, this is, that is our, to make us calm in our mind. So we need to, for me, as a breeder before, I always look every day, not only every day, but maybe thrice or twice a day, I go to my birds and see them and check them and, and change this one and do this one, always doing like that. Because that is our happiness in breeding birds. So you can observe what hap what is what is happening to your bird if you also see check them regularly. So for me I trim this one when it is shorter not this long. See? Did you see the bird look like this? It looks like an alien. <laughs> So, cetacean beak and feather, it's poor formation of light feathers. This, uh, but I have also a worst case here. So, what is the cause? Feather dust and bird droppings may be the culprits, particularly ingestion and respiration, uh, respiration of contaminated waste food. That's why, for, I don't know for others, my friend, huh, but uh macau Afri african greys have a contributor of uh, feather dust they are they are what's this producing feather dust if that that dust reach the water container of your smaller birds this might be happen to them so Maybe if we have we have plenty of birds, we have uh, different sizes of birds. We can we can separate those big ones from the small ones to avoid the infestation of the of the food and water. And also, my friend, feather dust. Mo, uh, pigeons pigeons produces feather dust. So it's not for me. For me, it's not advisable to to put your your pigeons for for if you are racing pigeons put your racers uh, racing pigeons and your uh, parrots together in uh, one facility so it's better to separate them and this is no treatment my friend definitely your bird look will look like an alien the rest of his life if he will not die So prevention, what is the what is the best way to prevent this one? Always disinfect your facility. Always clean your cages. Always clean your nest boxes. Especially after weaning, after your chicks already fly from the nest box, I it is advised. It's, uh, very very highly ad, uh, recommended to immediately clean because those that next box will be also the next box of your mites so by the way my friend do not clean your cages with a strong soap so this is the only way to prevent those clean and disinfect your facility regularly Next is the brown hypertrophy of the seer. Actually, this is not an illness. This is a hormonal imbalance. See? This is a hormonal imbalance for older female budgies. So, no worry for this one. Apparently, it's not caused by local infection. and ideal treatment consists of finding the treating underlying cause. The shears, the shears uh, should be treated also by picking away a heaped up material and applying a little bit of lotion. Applying a little bit of lotion, th this is uh, possible 
when your bird is only 1 to 10, what's this, pair only. But if you have 100 pairs, you cannot pick them all. So, better, uh, better to put, uh, uh, what's this, uh, variation of the food. This one for females. Once again, this is not a... Uh, this is hormonal imbalance. I already discussed this in my previous blog, The Seer, to identify the male and the female of the Bajwi. So next, uh, illness is EGY, uh, e the avian gastric yeast. Is a digestive disease found in parolets. So, mostly, it affects also the budgies. AGY may inhabit a bird's stomach without causing symptoms or illness. So, it's a, uh, it's a disease. So, this is the result of the poop. The poop, the poop of the budgie, if, uh, if they have uh, AGY, their poop, the seeds is not digest, uh, properly digested. So you can see immediately what is the problem. Uh, you can identify immediately what is the problem of the, your bird by identifying or just checking on the poop of the bird. So tumors. Do you think only humans have tumors? Also birds have tumors. Common tumors include fatty tumors, testaculars, kidneys, adrenal tumors, and many other types. So this happened to your bird. This is what uh, it looks like. Especially on the wing. In the wing part, in the wing part here, and at the back of the wing. Imagine guys, it's already very, very difficult to remove this one on human beings. How much more on birds? So if you see as if you see this on your birds, uh just in advance say goodbye to your birds. So the goiter <coughs> Can you imagine birds also good? Because they're very very noisy. That's why, maybe, that's why. So, iodine deficiency is caused enlargement of the thyroid gland that causes a change in the bird's voice. It is the same with human being. If the human being have a deficiency in the iodine, he have a goiter problem. So, what is the purpose, uh, what is the treatment for this one if they have a iodine deficiency? So, put iodine, add iodine to their diet. Goiter occurs especially when they are non all seeds diet. So take note guys, uh, all seeds diet is not better for your birds. That's why in our previous blog, I also discussed it to you. The, uh, what's this, the other variation, the other, the, the fruits, the leafy vegetables, uh, you can also integrate that one or you can also schedule that one, change the feeding, uh, what's this, uh, menu of your birds, not only seeds, because uh, birds cannot live on seeds alone. <laughs> seeds contain a very low level of iodine that is required by thyroid gland to function properly. Therefore, the gland swells to try to extract. Also, guys, some 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 of us is using cattle bone. Cattle bone, but some of us, some of us is using what's this? Uh, made, uh, made source of calcium. We are using the plaster of Paris and doing that one. You can also add salt. You can also Himalayan salt on that plaster of Paris that you are making. The calcium blocks. You are making calcium blocks. The binder of the calcium blocks. The most important part of the calcium blocks is the plaster of Paris. The plaster of Paris, you can also integrate, you can also put salt on the, but not, do not put uh, many salt. Maybe we can ratio it depending on on how much you are making, how much uh, the volume of your, uh, of your ingredients to put in your calcium block. So best, 
Also, you can put also mongo sprout. For me, mongo is not very good for my arthritis. <laughs> so winter food, if you are with, if you are a place in, in the Philippines, we don't have any winter, my friend. We only have sunny and rainy days. So, moring moringa si moringa leaves, uh, bread. But you don't feed hot bread to your birds. Uh, you feed them uh, old breads. So what can trigger goiter? The most common cause of goiter worldwide, again, is a lack of iodine in their diet. Next is cytokosis or parrot fever. Cytokosis caused by bacteria. The disease can be transmitted to people. Birds should be tested, especially if they will be living elderly. So this is what we look like if your bird is sick, have fever. Have fever. This I think this one is don't have fever. I, I think this have uh what's this? Zombie virus. See? It will you can you can see if your bird you can easily identify if your bird is not well because look at your bird. This is a cha uh, the the change in characteristic, the change in behavior, the change in physical appearance uh, is there. So this is the sign of illness that, as I've said, this is the change in attitude, decreased activity, decreased talking. Your bird is just laying around and look like this. Look like sick. See? Change in character of respiration, any noticeable breathing movement, tail bubbling, while resting, he be breathing. Change of weight. Discharge from the eyes of nose. It's a fever. What happened to human also happened to birds. What is the uh, what is what you can find in human also also in birds? Decreased or excessive food of water consumption, vomiting or regurgitation, change of appearance or posture, injury, bleeding or enlargement of swelling body, change in character and droppings. So what is our what is our remedy? What is our treatment for this one? So how to how to treat uh, cytokosis? Cytokosis is a fever, my friend. So antibiotic will do. And therapy of the primary treatment for individual cytokosis is a medicine that consists uh, consists of tetracycline and doxycycline. There are usually uh, medication used most individual respond. Also, you can use erythromycin. I, I, I am using this one, erythromycin, as an antibiotic for my chickens before. I mix it with the water. So these are some samples of tetracycline, uh, hydrochloride, water, solu water soluble, doxycycline. This is for parrots. We can buy this one. We can purchase this one mostly in our local uh, agrivet supply in the Philippines. I don't know in other. I don't know here in Saudi Arabia or in uh, in other countries. Erythromycin. So you treat them with antibiotics. Excuse me, my friend. So next one is liver disease. It's probably associated with poor nutrition, although other illness can cause the condition. So li liver disease, my friend, is very, very difficult to identify liver disease because you cannot see your birds. You can see the sick bird, but you cannot tell that that, is a ha that, that bird have a problem with the liver. So this is how what's happening to their liver when they have this disease. So this is the f the normal the normal liver, and this is one is the sick liver. So you can see the difference of the color and this some blood on some parts. So this one is very difficult to treat. So what we can do for this one is we we are very we watch the diet of our birds, birds. Uh, we monitor it closely. So this is what the normal dropping looks like. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, now we are talking on poops. The poop of the bird, there are three parts of the poop of the bird. The feces, the urates, and the clear urine. If this is the, this is the, what's this? If the, our bird produces this kind of feces, meaning our bird is uh, normal, he, a uh, male, or the, the bird is healthy. Feces should be green or brown diet, can change color depending on the food that they eat. Urine should be clear and watery as shown. Colors, uh, amount can be alert to a problem. So this is the picture, but it's not so clear here. No, so, so as, as a breeder, we also watch, we also observe the the droppings of our bird if that is uh because we can also the we can also see the the bird if it's healthy or not through the droppings so here we have also the normal i see the normal here but if your if your uh bird poops look like this meaning no urates no urates meaning have parasite so lack of fluid, your birds have the no clear urine, your bird have dehydration. <laughs> this also, if the pup already have blood, that is not normal, my friend. Check your birds or immediately uh, segregate your bird from the colony and treat them individually. So what is the best medicine for liver problem? Milk thistle that has been used to treat liver disorder for more than 2,000 years. Imagine my friend, for 2,000 years. In our country, in our country, in my country in the Philippines, we are using this silimarin. We are using, oh, silimarin, I'm discussing you. Maybe you can support my channel. <laughs> so, we are using this silimarin in humans, but also we can also apply this in our in our birds. So this have uh, these are the example of or of milk thistle. See. It's but commonly in the Philippines, we are using this one. Tadang! So that's it. So next is the polyoma virus or the French mold. Have you seen parrot that don't have feathers? It's a French mold. First described as the budgie fledging disease, this virus causes the death of chicks as they emerge from the nest. So this will. This will be your budgie look like with no feathers. It look like a giraffe or something like that. See? You can you can see also. That's why it's very it is very recommended my friend to uh, set a constant schedule of cleaning your cleaning your facility. Uh, cleaning your nest boxes, disinfect your nest boxes, cleaning your cages, and disinfect your cages. And this one. See, it looks like a mouse, not a bird anymore. I don't think it, some, it looks cute, but I don't know. Cute for others, maybe not for me. <laughs> Your bird is suffering from cold when your bird look like this. What causes the polyoma virus? Feather dust again from bird droppings. So treatment, prevention is better than cure. There is no definitive treatment of polyoma virus, my friend. Next is protozoal infection. It's a fungal infection that commonly causes respiratory disease in the pet birds. It's aspergillosis. Common in small parrots. 
See? How do birds get the bacterial infection? The bird usually develops bacterial infection when he has poor hygiene or she is experiencing high emotional stress level. So my friend, do not put the cage of your birds near the train station, near the noisy places, near like that. Keep them away from uh, too many activity to avoid stress also to your bird. Especially when you are breeding. So, this is a sample of a dirty cage with a plum head, plum head inside. How do you treat respiratory infection of your budgies? You put antibiotics. As I've said earlier, antibiotics was that uh, erythromycin can be applied. Antibiotic for budgies. For example, this one, if this is available in your area, the Oflox. Again, this one. And the very, uh, the very available, whatever place you are, is ginger. You chop your ginger, you feed it to your budgies. Serve as a natural antibiotic to our parrots. Again, this one, my friends. This is the number 11 I include, the splay legs. Mostly, most of the breeders experience this one, splay legs. So what is splay legs? The uh, most birds develop splay legs when they are still in the nest. So, what is the cost of uh, the cost of uh, cause of splay legs? Possible causes poor nutrition, but I don't think so. Maybe this one: missing bedding, inappropriate bedding, or the neck or the nest surface is not too slick to the bird's feet to grass. So, this is the big contributor. Why you are bird, why your chick is having a splay leg. Legs do not develop adequately, are not strong enough to support the bird's weight. As you can see, my friend, when you are, when you are, uh, we get a dressed chicken. For example, a dressed chicken. Chicken leg, the body of the chicken is much larger compared to the leg of the chicken, so they are not developed. When they are not supported well, when they are chick, for example, when are talking birds, we are talking budgies, uh, chicks. When they are not supported, when your when your nest box is missing bedding, and they the the feet cannot grasp, the tendency for that one is to splay the leg. Uh, uh, they will splay the leg of the birds. These are some picture of uh, splay legs. This one. This one. So now, it's not good to see your birds like this because eventually, when you will uh, not take uh, action for this one, your bird cannot survive. So, what is the recommended action to to restore the the leg of your bird? So we we will do like this. How do you fix play legs? <coughs> we will do it like this. We will make a rubber to support the leg while the bird is still young. So it will it will uh, it will serve as a support. See? See in this picture? We can also make this one an, uh, a small hair rubber band with a plastic straw. This is a very simple, very simple, very effective, and very, very, very available in our area, in any area. Uh, rubber band and a uh, straw. This last, last my friend, some some look this one as a beauty, but some look this one also is agonizing situation for your birds. The feather duster syndrome. I don't know if it if you look at it, it's nice, it's beautiful, but from a bird point stand of view, it's very difficult to have this one. A condition characterized by overlong feathers that do not stop growing as usual periods. The condition is sometimes known as chrysanthemum feathering. 
So this is what it looks like. This is the normal feather, the head and the wing, but this is the mutant uh, feathers. It only grows, it only continues to grow. So your bird will look like this. So you decide if this is beautiful or uh, agonizing to your birds. In the wild, in the wild, definitely, in the wild, this will die because this cannot fly. When the bird cannot fly, they cannot see, they cannot find their own food. This one. It looks like just came out also from the parlor or something like that. See? It's, it depends to you if this is beautiful or this is but this is a uh, what's this? This is an uh, a mutation of your bird. This uh, this is uh, for me. This is a negative mutation because your bird cannot survive. Your uh, your bird doing like this. I th how do they breed if they look like this? They cannot fly. How can they breed if they don't they don't know how to fly? Maybe they will have partner also looking like this. I don't know. I didn't see this one in personal. So, my friend, that is our... Where's that one? So, that is our discussion to the illness of the Bajirigars. I hope you... You have... You receive... Uh, little bits of knowledge uh, regarding our discussion today. Thank you. Shukran. Uh, shukriya. Daghang salamat. Maraming salamat to all. Thank you so much and I hope you have uh, bits of ideas from our discussion uh, this discussion uh, regarding illness of Bajirigars. Shukran! Shukran!